YouTube, it's Demetri, and today we're going to answer the question, should you get a PhD in 2024 here? So we're in 2023, wrapping it up here. I've mentioned we've been in a recession. People have been pushing back, saying I'm full of nonsense. Um, but we're looking at what's coming out in the news here. So I'll put a few I guess, shots on the screen. You can see uh, Barclays is looking at doing layoffs. Uh, Citibank is doing layoffs. Wells Fargo is doing layoffs. The market is just laying off a lot of the business making ventures. Um, City has been vastly overinflated with gross expenses for a long time. Uh, we're cutting costs. We're trying to main, remain profitable. This is the time to do it. And magically, as I'm talking to a lot of the banks, they're saying, we, we, we've got a higher risk management though. We're trying to figure this out. We're repositioning. Firms are moving. So I heard this last week, uh, one of the big banks is actually getting out of their primary market, shifting into a completely new market, much safer market. The prime market's getting out of subprime here. Um, and so we're going to be seeing more shuffling. They took the building, um, they were down from renting floors two to 15, down to floors two to nine. So there's going to be massive cuts, massive layoffs, and this is the hardest time to be a quant. And so people are asking, like, is this a good time to get a PhD? And the answer is, yeah, like this is a great, perfect timing to get a PhD with a big asterisk at the top here. Um, you don't get a PhD to get a degree. And I think this is where I've struggled explaining this to a lot of people. Uh, the way in the United States it works, at least give you the U.S. perspective here. Uh, a master's degree is like a graduate degree, an advanced sort of piece of paper. You put in an extra couple of years, you took a bunch of classes, maybe did a little research project, you slapped it together, uh, but they're competitive, right? You're looking to get um, some more rigorous sorts of, you know, mathematics here. So, I mean, a book that I'm working on now, I'm reading through here. Just throw this on the screen for you guys. Uh, as Monte Carlo Methods in Financial Engineering by Paul Glasserman. It's kind of a legendary book. Good book to read. Just what I'm working on now. Um, but these sort of things are what a master's is good for. It's getting the nitty gritty details, getting some more coding, getting your hands dirty, uh, getting some sort of foundation. That's all it's giving you. It's giving you a mastery level of a foundation here. That's all it should be doing. It should be significantly more rigorous than an undergrad, um, but it's going to be focused on some sort of very specific topic here. Now, a PhD, you should be looking for an advisor, not a program. So this is where it's quite challenging when students say, you know, Wait, what's the best PhD program? What about this? What about that? I don't know, because the reality is you need to find a... Uh, right, professor, uh, that's going to take you on as a student for your PhD, and they should be having some sort of specialty in this. And I've excellent shout out. Uh, there's a student at Texas A&M that came to our meetup and was talking a lot about this. You know, I wanted to work with this professor and this is their specialty and their expertise, you know, but I have some concerns as other professors doing another topic, right? You should be going and saying, I want to be, you know, let's say Monte Carlo methods, like maybe Monte Carlo methods are where you want to be an expert at. And so you go find someone who has a lot of expertise in Monte Carlo methods. Hopefully it's related to finance. If you want to end up in quant finance and you find the professor and you apply to work with that professor, Right. You don't say, well, I want to work for I want to go to University of Michigan, you know, because I think it's a really good school or I want to go to Columbia. It's a really good school. No, no, no. You go to get a Ph.D. under a specific person because that person has extensive experience in research in that industry here. Now, the other differentiating factor, I think, for a Ph.D. versus a master's. So let me throw this out here. I get a lot of nonsense on this as well. Uh, people on if you go on to Reddit, which is my least favorite platform. People go on there and they say, you know, you don't need a PhD. It's a worthless waste of time. Dimitri talks about that. He has no idea what he's talking about. And real, real quants, you know, they do high frequency trading. They do trading. They do this, that, that. No, you're not a quant. You're a quant dev. So you are doing computer programming. And let me help you out. For quant dev and computer programming, you do not need a PhD. Okay. Uh, for quant research, it is far more desirable to have a PhD. So one reason you might go and get a PhD is you want to work in quantitative research. And no, I don't mean generic stock selection, which I get a lot of questions on that. Um, quant research should be really baked into like, um, you know, doing more rigorous mathematical, deep academic style research to really drive quantitative finance strategies here. If you're using moving averages quickly or throwing it into an Excel sheet or something like it's not quant research. Um, when you, when I recommend these books and people say, these books are insane. Um, this is the sort of depth you should be going into. Um, even when I do, you know, model development and model research on my end right now, my current role, I'm this book, 
Yes, big, big secret. This book is what I've been using um, along with a few other textbooks like on measure theory to really dive into setting up complex systems that work together in a cohesive framework. And again, putting all this together should be done at a deep level. So if you're wanting to go get a PhD, typically it's someone who just loves to learn. Like you just absolutely have to love learning. Um, that's what a PhD is really for. Like for me, I wish I would have got a PhD. Um, the reason for it is when it's cheaper than a master's in the US, because if you are good enough and you get into a PhD program to study under a professor, it should be that you get paid a small stipend to live off of as a PhD student. Your tuition is free, but you work for the university doing, you know, teaching other classes and doing that sort of work here. But I wish I would have got a PhD because I could teach. It is much, much easier to teach in academia with a PhD. I don't have a PhD because I got into my master's about a year and I thought about it and thought, I did the wrong thing, right? I ended up doing the master's though because um, I didn't know if I really wanted to do a PhD. I didn't really see a lot of opportunities that were relevant to what I wanted to do, but I was also young from an undergrad in a finance, you know, undergrad finance and economics. I didn't understand the math, the theory. I didn't understand the things that excited me. I didn't know I was going to fall madly in love with time series. Um, those sorts of things came later during my master's. And for me, it didn't make any sense to pay $70,000 for the master's, spend two years of my time doing that, and then going back and doing a PhD. Now, a good PhD will take you five to seven years in the US. This is not a European PhD. Um, I hear PhD students brag and go, I finished mine in three. It's like, yeah, and you weren't published in the top journals. Um, and that's what a PhD should be. It should be for someone to dive really, really, really deep into one very specific topic. Um, a PhD should give you very rigorous and well put together uh, research skills. So one reason I like hiring PhDs is because they have sat on a problem and struggled for years. So I've been on a problem, my current job for over a year, and I feel absolutely terrible about it because I wish I could do it faster. Um, but there are limitations and hurdles and other things involved that slow you down, but it's being able to sit on that problem for a long term here. So if you want to get a PhD, I would not do it just because like, oh, the market's down. I'm going to go out and get a PhD. And, you know, I think that's going to be a great use of my time. Um, I think you should go and get the degree that you think is going to be most useful. So if you're going to just, you don't want to do all the research, you don't want to spend five to seven years struggling with the problem and being poor for another five years, um, go get the master's, spend the 70 to 100,000, whatever these masters are going for these days, uh, and then realize it's going to be hard when you get out. Uh, but that being said, I don't think it's good to wait because what are you going to do while you wait? And how do you know when the market's going to turn? And if the market's going to turn, right? Some people are speculating we're going to hit a soft landing. I don't see it. Maybe we are. If we hit a soft landing, maybe it would make most sense to go for a master's right now. Uh, if you're already in a master's, right, one thing I see students doing, so this is important for international students, you have a work visa and you only have so much time to find um, work before you basically get kicked back out and have to go home to your home country. If that is the case, um, I would consider... Uh, you know, maybe adding a second master's, again, that's very expensive, maybe considering a PhD, but again, realizing it's going to take you a bunch of time and effort and don't waste time. This is where I think I'm frustrated with people and they ask, you know, should I get a PhD or should I add a second master's is, is it adding, you want to make sure it's still adding value, guys, right? I understand you're buying time. You want to stay in the US markets. You need to be competitive. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to waste, you know, wait around for two or three or four years and then go for a master's or then go for a PhD and think, okay, I'm going to go when the markets are good because now you wasted years of your life not doing anything. And when I do the applications to get into graduate school, a graduate school is going to say, what did you do for the last two or three years? Well, I waited it out because I didn't think the market was good. And you're going to kick yourself because you're just, I can't predict the future. I have a speculation. I have a gut feeling with this. I don't have any mass sets of data and things all running behind it. Uh, everybody else is speculating as well on if we're going to hit a soft landing, if we're going to hit an actual serious crisis, maybe we're just going to turn the corner. Uh, if you're wanting to get a graduate degree, though, a master's or PhD, just go do it. Just go do it. Um, I think it's a good use of time and value and effort. I think often if you are dedicated, you will find other paths. So even if you go and you get a master's or a PhD and you are you know get the degree and you graduate and you can't find one in quant finance, you should be able to find a data science job. You should be able to find something interesting or different to do here and kind of work your path around. I can tell you my path did not end up the way I planned it out. When I was undergrad, I thought I'll go get a financial engineering master's, go get a job being a quant trader uh, because I wanted to be a quant trader. And then I realized through my master's program that doing math was more fun and doing stats was more fun and 
building models was more fun. And then I realized I wanted to be a quantitative researcher. Then I graduated and I ended up in risk management. I thought, man, what a waste of time. And I didn't realize doing model development, model validation on the sell side, so the banking side is actually what quants do. Like I'm I get the opportunity to sit and go through textbooks and work on deep problems. Uh, I'm not tied to the market like a front end quant or a quant dev where you're just programming and hurry, hurry, hurry. The market's moving. We have to come up with a strategy and the world's ending. Um, I, I get time to sit and think and process and do actual quant work. So quantitative thinking and processing. So anyways, those are my two cents. If you want to get a PhD, do it for the right reasons. Do it because you love learning. Do it because you really enjoy the topics. Do it because you want to work in academia. Do not do it because you think, oh, it's going to give me an edge. Because if you're not really in love with the PhD, it's going to grind you up and spit you out. Um, if you're wanting just to get a deeper, more rigorous understanding with more hands-on experience, there are plenty of masters to do that. Again, you will save time. You will spend a lot of money. Um, but you probably will be in a much better situation in that case uh, than wasting five to seven years getting a PhD. Maybe not finishing. Maybe finishing. And then just not enjoying the work because it didn't give you a whole lot of edge over a master's student. So anyways, those are my two cents. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Thank you.